So my name is Nate Bastian. I work at the Excellence Cluster in Munich in Germany. And my research focuses on the formation and early evolution of uh, star clusters. So star clusters are collections of uh, stars that form together. And uh, we, we know that uh, stars like to form in uh, large groups, but only some fraction of these groups will stay bound for long periods of time of things that we end up seeing as open clusters or globular clusters. And so what my research is focusing on and what Gaia is going to provide a, uh, a great insight on is what fraction of stars form will end up into a bound stellar cluster, and what fraction will disperse into the field and be something like the way we see our sun, which is not bound to any other stars itself. And it turns out that the answer to this question has a large importance on to uh, theories of star formation, that the main theories out there predict different fractions of stars forming in different environments into clusters or things that we call associations that will become unbound. Um, and then another region of, uh, of interest that I have for Gaia is in the formation of massive individual stars. And that's again into the same region. Uh, the, the same uh, reason is can we find massive stars that are forming in isolation or do all these massive stars actually need a dense cluster of stars underneath them uh, from which to form. And again, this is going to, uh, we're trying to use this in order to constrain theories of star formation and uh, stellar evolution. And right now in the early evolution of stellar clusters, there's a lot of debate on uh, um, uh, how clusters are actually destroyed. And we know that the vast majority of clusters seem to be destroyed. And so there are two main effects. We don't know which ones dominate. You have an internal effect, which is due to the, uh, um, the way that uh, actually binds a cluster together is a collection of gas and stars at very early ages. And once the gas is removed, due to the actual stellar evolution and the, uh, um, the energy imparted by stars, then it basically changes the gravity within the star cluster, and the whole cluster will be called popping star cluster. Additionally, we, uh, uh, we know the external effects, so passing giant molecular clouds that come near stellar clusters also seem to disrupt star clusters. And which of these two effects actually dominate is one of the big questions, and again, actually places constraints on how clusters form. So what Gaia is really going to be great for is uh, two different things. The first is actually finding member stars uh, of these individual clusters. And it turns out that when we view these clusters, not only do we see all the cluster stars, we also see a lot of stars that are in the foreground and in the background. And uh, Gaia provides us an exact distance measurement to every single star, and therefore we know exactly what stars are part of the cluster. But additionally, we also get velocity information, how the stars are moving. And so we'll be able to see, for example, in a star cluster, if we see all the stars are moving away from the common point, then we know most likely that internal effects have actually disrupted the star cluster. But if the stars are moving out in kind of random directions or along a pref preferred, uh, preferred direction, then that turns out that then it's going to be external effects that are going to be solving it. And basically by looking at which clusters are, are, are expanding and which clusters are, are disrupting along a particular axis are going to give us the answer that we're looking for.